It's all messy back there. This is where you get to pretend you're Wolverine. I just realized it's Monday, so I'm washing my sheets and like you could see the, the comforter and the pillows laying on the floor in the bedroom behind me. We're not messy like that. The sheets are in the wash. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met. Oh gosh, hang on. Good morning. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met. If we have met, welcome back. How are you? It is June. I can't believe it's almost over. It's like, it's boggling my mind. It's really making me kind of sad already, but I'm not gonna let that get to me. How are you? How is your corner of the world? What are you working on? What's going on? Last Friday, we had a live bat making on this channel and it brought up some questions about blending with like hand tools because also last week I used some hand tools in the video um, from Tuesday. I moved my schedule out, my filming and uploading schedule out. I'm filming this kind of quickly. I'm going to do a video today about blending with hand tools because I recognize that not everybody has access to a drum carter that's like, you know, really big or even a small one. So hand tools can be a great option. And I'm going to show you some tips on blending with carters, hand carters, hand combs. And then I'm also gonna show you some tips on blending with a blending board. First, I'm gonna have to pull this sari silk off. Did I get it? Yep. It happens sometimes. I try not to put my tools away, like needing to be cleaned, but apparently I missed those because I don't see anything else. Before I do that, I need to pack some orders for my site and then we will get into it. Okay, we're gonna set up three bundles of fiber to blend. I'm gonna do the exact same colors, the exact same amount for each one, so you can just like compare. 
So, how many grams in half an ounce? 0 0.5 ounces is equivalent to 14.175 grams. Okay, that's what I thought. I picked out two colors that will show up against each other, but I think are still gonna look cool when they're blended. So I used this, like, I don't know, sagey green, and I'm going to combine it with this one, which is like a dark aqua. I don't even have the bag open yet, apparently. And I'm going to use, I think 10 grams each, cause I don't, even a full ounce is gonna take a while. So I'm gonna use 10 grams of each of these two colors. So even blend and I'm gonna do it three times. Okay, so there's three, three, three. So I have 10 of each, 10 of each, and 10 of each. So I have all three of these all set. We're gonna blend one at a time. I'm gonna kind of like talk you through it. I'm gonna take this outside though because it's really, really nice. It's like 70 degrees and sunny and I need to be outside. And it's breezy. So I may have to voice over, but if I do, oh, this breeze probably isn't blowing across the mic, so I might be okay. So when I do this with hand cards, I'll put on like a layer of each. So let's see, we want this to be straightened out. And what I do is lay it against the card, put pressure on the back and then pull kind of down across the card so it's capturing some, see that? On there, just like we did. And just like I did in the raw fleece video, I am going to basically just catch the tips. That's all you wanna do. And I'm not, oh, see that breeze is gonna mess me up. I'm gonna have to keep flipping it back just to keep the breeze blowing it. Okay. And that's fine, it pretty much stayed in the same configuration, which is not a big deal. So now what you're gonna do is flip this over and I kind of like angle it in just so there's nothing hanging off the sides. And you press down on the back, the handle side of your comb, and then release by flipping your comb over. And this is where you're gonna start seeing some blending. So you literally just keep transferring it back and forth. And what I like to do is like, I'll do one, like I just did, and then I'll switch them and transfer from this one to that one. And I'll do the same thing. Sorry, they need to be the same way. I'll do the same thing and kind of angle the fiber in. Okay, Ooh, I caught some on the handle. So I'm gonna press that down into the tines. You want it down into the tines back here. And then you're just gonna pull it off adjust it. If you're not getting as much blending in a certain part as you want, what you can do is offset them a little bit like this. I'm going to switch again, but I am getting really close to what I want. So I'm almost there. I think maybe one more pass or maybe two. Can you see how well it's blended now? 
I am loving that color. I'm gonna have to do this on the drum carter. So you can do two things. You can do what I did in the last video. Actually, I'll show you that on the next um, carter full of fiber. But you can also take the this and put the two like bundles or whatever you want to call it, the two cards full together. Then pull this one off just like this um, towards the handle and then roll it up the other way. What's the matter, babe? When you do that, you just roll it up the other way and you get this, um, I don't know, it's not a roll egg, even though in some ways it'll kind of act like one, but if you just spin off the end, more of the fibers are aligned than you would get in a roll egg. So you just get a different yarn. It'll be smoother if you do it this way, but you get a really nice blend, see? Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of this one on the cards and I'll show you how to roll it off as a more traditional roll egg. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, so if you want to make a real roll egg, I just, like I said, just like to angle it in so it won't, then you just um, catch it. I'm holding it down in the tines with this hand and I'm just gonna pull it off. And then there are multiple ways to do this. You can do it with the other um, carter I've showed I've said that before, but I just really love to roll it with my hands. So, and you just fluffy roll it this way off the carter. And now it's not gonna look like those super tight. Those are really poonies, the ones that you see on Etsy and stuff. Um, but you would normally, most people will spin it right off the end. So we're gonna go on to the combs. You guys have seen me do this. These are my Valkyrie um, extra fine combs because this is merino. Basically, all I'm gonna do is lash some on. This does not work the same as it does when you use raw fleece. And I'm going to like alternate it basically. Pulling out more or less one staple length. I mean, you're never gonna be exact. And alternating them on your comb. And again, when I use combs, I do not like to fill them more than a third full because as you um, go through this process, it will fluff up and what will happen is you'll comb it off and it'll get all fluffed up and it'll want to bend back over the tines and I don't want that. So I'm going to try to be careful not to let that happen. Oh, you can go maybe one more layer. I will go, I'm gonna go one more layer. These are sharp, I almost just poked myself. So this is very similar to if you were going to blend with a hackle you can use it the same way. Looks like that's about even. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my other one, and the breeze is probably gonna work against me again, but we're just gonna try. Try not to poke myself. You just catch the tips. See, I just pulled out a big chunk because I went too far in. Just catch the tips. And that is already wanting to see that. I don't want that. So I got to be careful not to do that. And this is a lot easier than combing raw fleece because you're just going to transfer it back and forth until you have the blending level that you want. 
Also, always comb away from yourself. I would not want to see anyone get hurt. Okay, so this is what's left. It is not a lot, and they're shorter fibers. You can see that they're quite short off the comb. I'm gonna leave that for waste, but I will put it in my combing bag for, or carding bag for later. I just save like all bits and bobs that get pulled off tools. As long as they're not dirty or full of VM, I save them, and then I just use them to card like into bats later. So I'm gonna set that aside. This is blended to a level that I like. So in order to spin it, many people just spin right off the comb, which is totally fine. You can just spin until you feel like you're done, or you can pull it off into what's called a, I've heard it called a sliver. It would still be considered top because it's combed, but it's now a blended top. So you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna pull it off and quickly go ahead and do the rest of this. So this, so pretty this is the blend from these two pretty evenly gorgeous all right so we're gonna do the blending board next this one if I'm really blending trying to truly get a blend like well any of the things I've already showed you this would probably be my last choice but you can do it and I'm going to tell you a way you can do it and then a way you can actually spin it to get even more blending. All of these methods you can just continue like to blend back and forth to get as blended as you want. So you, you just keep going. But if I wanted to blend these two colors on my board, let me show you what I would do. I will take one. And I think the key to this is thin layers. And it depends 100% on if you just want to, okay, so I'm spreading this out so I'll get thinner layers. If you just, how much you really want to blend. So the thinner layers work better. And I tend to like the thinner layers anyway because I, um, I'm trying to think how to say this. I I like how they spin better when they aren't like there's not like clumps in it, if that makes sense. So what I would do if I really wanted to get a good blend off a blending board is really thin layers just like this. there I do think one of the nice things about the blending board is how controlled you can be about where things go I'm going to grab my brush and push that down in
you. All right, so that's number one. So now that it's all on here, you can take this off in multiple ways that it will change how blended the fiber is. I'll try to explain. You can take this off in one bat, just pull it off um, without drafting at all. That will look really cool. I, I don't want to do like a hundred of them, but let's just say we did that. This is what we would get. But when you spin it, you are pulling the fibers all past each other and you are going to get more blending. Okay? So that's one way to do it. You can also take your uh, sticks. I don't know. What do you call these things? Your dowels that come with. This is going to blend it a little bit more. So we're going to take it off basically as a bat. Wait a minute. I gotta capture it all the way. It's very awkward because my right hand is in front of the camera. And as you draft, if you draft like I am right now, as you draft, it blends a little more. You can actually see it happening. See that? So at this point, and it's because you're just pulling these fibers into like a looser layer, a thinner layer, and so you're seeing more of the different colors, okay? Hang on, let me pull this out. First of all, it doesn't need to be so tight that they're hard to pull out. You can spin this directly from this end, and as you spin it from the end, it will blend even more. This is your blended color from um, your blending board. And you just can spin that end to end. And like I said, there's a million ways to draft it. A million ways to blend it further. Just through the drafting. Just through the spinning. These are the three that I blended on the hand cards. There is even a little speck of VM that came from my backyard. So, and these are the like different ways that you can take them off and spin them. And then, okay, and here's the one, the little nest of the fibers that came off the combs. I feel like this one's gonna be so beautiful to spin and it's really pretty. Now comparing them to each other, I know that the, my table is a wreck, I am so sorry. This is actually some more of that. So let's really get in and we'll compare them. So this came off the blending board and only one pass. Of course, if you wanted it further blended, you could do the same thing again. Just like spread the same fiber out in thin layers and it will blend more. But for me, I kind of like this because it's going to shift back and forth between the blue and the green. This is the hand cards. This is the roll egg kind of rolled up. And then this is the roving that I just pulled off the other. It's kind of like a mini bat really that's rolled the opposite way lengthwise. Um, also, I would love spinning these. This one, I really think I would love spinning all of these. And this one is the one that came off the, uh, the combs. <sighs> Sorry, I don't wanna say the wrong thing. So blending board, hand cards, combs, and it's basically pulled into a sliver and then rolled into a little nest. Really, really, beautiful. Those two colors together make such a pretty color, don't they? I hope it helps some of you with your hand tools at home. You know, I would say, and I have said, this is just, especially with the hand tools, but even if it's not done with hand tools, even if you have a drum carter or an electric drum carter, it's a slow process. And do the parts of the process that you love and enjoy and leave the rest to someone else because it's not life and death anymore. It doesn't mean your kids won't have socks this winter or your spouse or your parents. And it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy it. So if it feels frustrating for you, even after about the first couple of weeks, because the first couple of weeks is always frustrating while you're learning, maybe you're better, like less frustrated human than I am. But for me, the learning process has frustration kind of melded into it. 
but I would suggest before you decide if you like it or not, work through that frustration period. If you're like me and you get frustrated, you're probably not. I bet you're really calm. <laughs> Nothing like me. So give it a try, you might love it. For me, it's very meditative. Next week, I have a surprise unboxing and tryout demos thing for us to do together. And then, oh, Friday, Tour de Flea starts. Next week, I will still have a video out on Tuesday, but I think maybe for the remainder of Tour de Flea's, I may just stick with the daily lives because it's a lot. I know it probably doesn't seem like it, but it really is. I hope you guys are getting geared up and you're ready to join me. I hope you hang out. Even even if you're weaving or knitting or doing whatever, even if you're not spinning, you can come hang out for the lives anytime. They are still gonna be fun. We're still gonna interact, just craft together with me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.